Hello guys. Just going to the supermarket. And this is like the the highlight of the week for me. And I usually go with my, my daughter. She's she's gonna be twelve years twelve years old soon. And uh, yeah, I think she doesn't want to come with me to the supermarket anymore because it's boring you know I asked my son he never wants to go he just wants to play his video games um, sometimes I can I can bribe him I'll say yeah I'll get you this and this this and that and he'll come and he has to be in a good, good mood as well but usually my daughter always comes with me but the last few times, you know, she says, Daddy, it's boring. I don't want to go there all the time. And uh, I realized that what what's the, the highlight of, of the week for me is boring for even a child. So, like, she's the only friend that I have. You know, now that I lost, well, since I lost my dad, she's the only one that I'm close to um, my wife I asked her I said I called her I said would you like to come to the supermarket and she shouted no I thought okay well she's always in a bad mood always in a bad mood you know I might ask her for something I'm, I I might need to help you know like today I washed I washed the sink I did all the plates cleared all the plates and then I had to change my sheets and I needed to find out where the uh, the, the clean sheets were so I knocked on a door and her, her immediate reply is now what do you want like when I hadn't called her for the whole day, I hadn't been in communication with her for for the whole day. What do you mean now? What do I want? <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Me and my wife, we just don't get on at all. So, you know. Uh, I don't think there's any future for me and my wife. We don't uh, get along. And, yeah, well, forget about that for the moment. Thing is, you know, I don't have any friends. And the only friend that I have is, or the person that I'm close to, is my daughter. But now, she's growing up. And I, I know that one day she's going to, you know, find a boyfriend maybe when she gets older get married or move out move out of the house you know and get a flat with the friends I don't know what people do and uh, yeah she'll be gone and I feel that I don't know I don't know how to say this like I, I'm investing all my um, my love into one person and then that person is going to leave but what else do I do you're supposed to love your children aren't you and your children love you um, sometimes I think should I also be in investing not investing but putting my time into finding a woman but then I think you know I I'm just tired tired of having relationships and then and then the relationships like collapse in and I tend to collapse along with the re relationship you know it takes a bit out of me um, my first relationship where I, I had a child in London uh, that collapsed and ever since you know, my I have a daughter. She's a kind of a strange daughter. You know, she doesn't. I don't see her, and we have not a good relationship. 
and uh, it's the old the old scenario where you have your you're you're a bloke and you split up with your girlfriend and you have a, a daughter and then she uses that daughter or son against you you know telling her or him all kind of bs like you're such a bad person and uh that person grows up to hate you or at least not to like you and sometimes even to want revenge to want bad things to happen to you so um yeah i feel sad about that because i know that no matter what i do or what i say in her eyes i'm always a bad person always you know because i left her mum yeah and i explained to her what i never i never left you i just left your mum because your mum was she was crazy she was making me go crazy always arguing always wanting this wanting that money of course money always wanted money and uh, i just couldn't take it anymore in fact it was when i was 28 years of age kept having arguments with her and i think i was heading towards a breakdown a mental breakdown in in fact on the occasion where i I ended up in hospital where the left side of my brain, I felt that it was numb. It was zzz, and I couldn't feel it. And I ended up in hospital because of, um, it, it was, I think the, uh, the climax of all my stress was when I was shouting at her on the phone and I smashed the phone on the floor uh, because we, we'd had an argument. And it was a second of these type of arguments in one week. And I started to feel my brain all throbbing. It was actually, in, I felt it was inside my brain. And uh, so, so what I, I remember what I did was um, I had my dog back then. His name was Duka, a, a male German shepherd. And I drove to a big park. Well, it's actually Hampstead Heath in London. And I used to go there with my dog. And what I did is I was sitting down. And the fact that he was panting in the back. I couldn't take it. I felt that the car was moving. And I just couldn't couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle the, the motion. So I thought, okay, let me just take him out. I took him out. And I sat on the grass. And as I was laying down flat on the grass. I, I felt that the, the earth was actually sucking me in. It was sucking me into the into the ground I, I actually felt the motion of going down and i actually heard the sucking sucking sound and i quickly got up and i thought what the hell is this and i thought okay let, let me just go home so I, I, as i was going home i just listened to all the birds singing in the in the trees and it sounded like screeching i was so hypersensitive i, I couldn't take the noise and and uh, I just quickly uh, drove home, and I thought I was going crazy. I went underneath the covers. I, I went home to my bedroom, went underneath the covers, and I just covered myself. I didn't know how to cope. And it was getting worse and worse and worse. I don't know what was happening to me. And this throbbing in my brain, it, it just got really, really bad. And that's it. I just made a decision just to leave. I didn't even tell my parents where I was going. And I ran through, I drove through a few, a few uh, red lights and I just parked my car on a double yellow line and I went into A&E and I, I told them what was happening. So after a while they checked me to see if I had a tumour, you know, they did a neuro test, you know, they tell you to look this way, that way, walk or do something, they prick your eye. And uh, then they said, okay, you probably don't have a tumour. So then I saw the uh, on-duty psychiatrist and she said, do you have any stress at the moment? And I said, yeah, I have, I'm having these arguments with my, my girlfriend. And she said, okay, well, take this tablet for a few days, diazepam, which used to be called Valium, and that calms you down. 
and then we'll make an appointment to see a psychiatrist. So I took that for a few days, then I saw a psychiatrist, and the same question, you know, are you depressed? Uh, are you stressed out? Are you depressed? I said, yeah, of course I'm depressed. I've got all these problems with my girlfriend, um, you know. Uh, so he put me on Seroxac, which is Paxil, the SSRI. And he said, don't worry, within a few weeks' time, you'll feel fantastic. And so that's when my, like, roller coaster of a, of a ride started. I did feel a, a lot better. But, uh, yeah, little did I, did I know it was going to be so difficult to come off. You know, like, 30 years later and still I'm having problems. But, yeah, going back to... Like, I have no friends. I really have no friends. And the thing is, you see, it's not just that I have no friends. It's difficult to make friends. Because most people are normal. And uh, they'll see right through me. They'll see that... I'm not saying that I'm not quite there, but I'm not the same as other people. And so, what what do you do? You know, at least if you have a girlfriend, you know, you've got something in common. You know, SCX. But I don't even think I could do that anymore because it's such a long time that, um, like, for years, me and my wife, we slept in different rooms. It must be about 10 years or 12, no, 12 years. And you might ask, okay, how did you have two kids, an eight-year-old and a 12-year-old? Well, we met on two occasions, believe it or not. So she must have been, like, really fertile on those, those two occasions. Yeah, maybe 20 minutes in, the, in, in 12 years, and I got two kids out of it. The two kids that I love, you know, I'm not going to say anything bad about my kids. Or her. But, uh, yeah, so I didn't think that I'd be in this position now where I need to maybe find somebody else or enter into another relationship with a, another woman. You know, how, how, do, how the hell do I choose another woman now? And then there's the thought that, you know, maybe I'm at fault because... The first relationship it was a disaster. The second one hasn't has ended, you know. I don't want to make any more mistakes, but the thing is, yeah, mistakes do happen. It's just it's just tiring. It's exhausting for me having to put all your like your your life force into uh, into a relationship with another person. And then after a few years, that person uh, changes their mind. It's funny how she changed her mind after um, after maybe working out that she's going to get half of all my sh all my stuff. Yeah, it's funny. You know what I'm trying to say. You know she she probably worked worked out that you know. This person is a good catch because he's got lots of money, or his dad has lots of money. So, one day, if, there, if there's a divorce or anything, then I'll get half of a lot of money. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not... Sometimes it sounds like I'm bitter. I am, but I'm not. Uh, it's just that I don't know... I don't know what to do. You know, some people can you know, not have friends, and they're fine. They can be alone, but not lonely. i found in my life that even when I had my mum and dad, I wasn't alone, but I was lonely. But now, I'm going to be alone, and that loneliness will, will increase, will get worse. I mean, I won't be alone because I'll have six dogs, to keep me busy, I suppose. 
but on the other side they can stress me out as well I love my dogs but you can't yeah you can hug your dog but you can't you know what I mean be romantically in love with your dog <laughs> well some people maybe are but not me um yeah you can't talk about things like I suppose if I found some uh, a nutty person a person who is nutty enough to uh, have similar kind of ideas like the talk about the elixir of life and life extension and weird things like that and uh, alchemy you know maybe you know maybe there's a chance of meeting someone that um what do you say compliments me that we can that fits me you know like when you have a jigsaw puzzle you know some person that fits you you know that um well, i don't know what i'm trying to say i'm tired now i'm gonna do my shopping and it's horrible going shopping alone i'm so used to going shopping with my daughter but now she's she's grown up she's getting older and uh she's super strong super strong i was i was arm wrestling with her and she actually beat me not because my arms are strong but i've got a problem with my right hand my my wrist is quite weak so i'm thinking bloody i better shape up here i better uh, I better strengthen strengthen myself. Otherwise, like a twelve year old beating me, and a lot, you know, forget about twelve year old. But it's you know, I mean, she feels quite proud that she beat me. She feels quite strong, and she is really strong. So I'm gonna have to start training to beat her. You know, give her a good workout. Really, yeah. So another lonely day. Uh, uh, shopping it's it's horrible when you see when you go shopping and you see the couples because now it's Friday night and uh, yeah and me on my own well sometimes I see couples and they're even old couples like in their 70s, 80s no 70s isn't old but even in their 80s or 90s they're still holding hands and I don't even go out with my wife. I mean, when she goes to the soup, and this started years ago. I, I should have seen this happen. You know, I should. Well, I, I knew this was happening. When we used to go to the supermarket, she used to get a trolley for herself and do her shopping, and I used to do my own shopping. And she said, "Meet at the cashier." So, she was like kind of separating from me slowly, slowly over the years. So I, I think, is it me, you know, is it maybe I haven't found the person that's right for me, but along the way, like, it's really tiring, I mean, it's taken a lot out of me mentally, emotionally, and uh, I don't want to go through another relationship, and I don't want to go through another breakup it's just not worth it it's it just takes too much out of me i don't want to argue i don't want to do this and that i just if if i have a chance i'd like to fee, uh, find someone who's down to earth that uh maybe a simple girl maybe some village somewhere in asia because i don't know a, an English woman, or a Western woman, for sure, she needs to be taken out here, spent money, <laughs> spent money on her, and, I don't know, I mean, yeah, someone said, Sue was saying, you know, one of my subscribers, there are really some nice, lovely women out there, but, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too negative, you know. Maybe I, I just think that me, women are evil. Not all women, of course, you know. You know, when it comes to 
choosing someone to have a relationship with. It's as if like women are like mercenaries, you know, they, they, and it makes sense that they should choose someone who isn't broke, but isn't mentally broke as well, or emotionally broke, because they have to stay with that person. They're not going to choose someone who's got health problems, because otherwise they're going to have to look after that person. So sometimes I think it's that men who are more romantic and they're more loving than women. Women are more practical and logical. You know, they choose a person who has all these attributes, whereas a man just needs a pretty woman. She doesn't even have to be beautiful. She just slim-ish, you know, even chubby. It doesn't really matter. As long as she's even slightly pretty, you know. Yeah, like a, a man would, like the average man would go for a, a, a pretty girl who isn't rich, who might have some kind of, uh, I don't know, some handicap or whatever, who works in McDonald's. A woman, a man, a, a woman would never go for that, you know. When I say never, okay, well she, he, she might find, she might be find him like uh attractive maybe she, he makes her laugh or whatever but i'm talking about long term you know husband material i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe it's that's the case for most women but maybe there are a lot of women that are really nice you know and don't care about those things don't care about money i've bloody never met one though so th that's the problem. I've never met a woman like that. I've never even heard of a woman like that. You know, none of my friends have said, oh yeah, there's that, that bird, that girl that, you know, she doesn't care about money. She's so nice. She uh, um, doesn't go out at night clubbing, come, come back at three o'clock in the morning all pissed. I've, I've never heard of a woman that is so nice, like an angel. And, yeah, of course, they, they must exist. It's just that I've never... It makes sense that I've never heard of any or seen any because I never go out. I never... And I don't trust people on the internet. You know, you get... I've looked at some of those sites. Uh, you know, women for look, looking for, for men, for boyfriends. And, uh, yeah, bloody hell, what they look for is like a big laundry list of... Um, things and you know, and uh, I feel that I don't have enough to give any of these women, but I suppose I'm not looking for any of those women, I'm looking for just that one woman. And uh, I'd like to meet a woman like naturally, you know, maybe when I'm doing my boring shop. <laughs> I'm so tired talking. Um, so, there you go. Um, another lonely evening for me. I'm going to do some shopping and uh, I think someone said I think Sue said, you know, fix yourself first. He love yourself, heal yourself first. And then you'll be good for other people, or at least you'll be healthy enough to to, to be able to take on maybe a, a relationship, you know, because maybe you, you, some people can't even take on, it's too stressful just to have even a nice relationship where, where nothing goes wrong, even that stressful, you know. I think as you age, things become even more stressful. Well, anyway. Yeah, that's what I think I have to do is uh, work on myself. And uh, after I've healed from the various disease processes that I've... I've counted 36, but after I've healed from all those, or even just a few of them, 
or in the process of healing, then I can be healthier and I can maybe think straight and maybe get lucky. Find a nice bird on the in the I don't know in the vegetable aisle. I don't know. I don't know if any of you guys have are going through the same same problems, loneliness. You know, people come up with like solutions. Oh, go out. You know, go out and go to the 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 pub. Go to the club. Go. That's the easy part. No, well, not easy part. Even that for me is also difficult. But I'm I'm saying you know I can visualize it. I can I can imagine me. Okay, I wouldn't do it, but let's say I did it. I went to the uh, nightclub or I don't know uh, a cafe or pub or something, and I met a girl. The initial effort I can make the initial effort, but then having to keep that up is bloody stressful and like for me i don't have like when you have some mental health issues you don't have all that energy you know if you you have to invest all that energy into keeping someone happy or keeping someone interested then it, it it's bound to fail um you know normal people normal people they have all that energy so you know some people you know if you're watching this yeah if you're lonely you can if you're in your 20s and 30s and if you're just lonely and you're staying at home playing you know or not pac-man but some other modern games if you're a gamer yeah go outside and try and meet someone but if you've got mental health problems like anxiety then you have to be careful because you can you know you can reach that tipping point where you don't have the the resources the energy to to deal with um even like a nice happy relationship so you know that's what i worry about you know um, so i don't know thumbs up if you like my talk thumbs down if you think it's a load of bs and i've just wasted your time um i don't know what to say um what am i supposed to say share like subscribe and see you in the next video i hope you guys have a nice weekend not a boring one or a lonely one i hope you've got a girlfriend or a boyfriend or and family and you know guys um i know we all do but um don't take your family for granted if you've got a mum or dad go and see them if you've got kids love them hug them don't don't take um you know what you have for granted okay bye